Hey, welcome to our scene on the mucopolysaccharidosis, Hurler syndrome and Hunter syndrome. Now, although there are seven mucopolysaccharidoses that have been identified, there are only two that we need to be aware of for the boards, and those are Hurler syndrome and Hunter syndrome. And that's represented over here by Homer hurling these elephants over here, which we'll discuss very soon, and him in hunting over here. Homer hurling over here for Hurler syndrome, and Homer hunting over here for Hunter syndrome. Now, the good news is, in both Hurler syndrome and in Hunter syndrome, there's the same accumulated substrate, and that is represented over here by the painting on the ceiling of this couple. The painting on the ceiling of this couple, DS and HS. Maybe that stands for David Strauss and Hannah Strauss? I'm not sure. But DS and HS are gonna help us remember the accumulated substrate seen in both Hurler syndrome and Hunter syndrome, heparin sulfate and dermatin sulfate. Now what leads to this increase in dermatin sulfate and heparin sulfate? It's different in Hurler syndrome and Hunter syndrome. In Hurler syndrome, it's due to the deficient enzyme alpha l iduronidase. That's represented by this elephant that he's hurling away with the ID, the long ID. Each elephant here has a long ID. Elephant with long ID for alpha l iduronidase. As opposed to in Hunter syndrome, the deficient enzyme is iduronate 2 sulfatase, represented by this ID running for iduronate with the 2 on it for 2, sulf that can taste. Here's sulfur that can taste. Sulfur that can taste. So again, that's a mouthful over there. Let's say it again. You have the ID over here running with the 2 on it on the sulfur that can taste. You see the tongue over there for iduronate 2 sulfatase. Now let's talk about the symptoms in Hurler syndrome and Hunter syndrome. Let's start with Hurler syndrome, which is much worse. Hurler syndrome presents with gargoyleism, represented by a gargoyle-like face, and therefore we see Homer over here with his gargoyle face over here. And on top of it, it's got this corn in this cloud by the eyes. The corn with the cloud to help us remember the corneal clouding. This differentiates Hurler syndrome from Hunter syndrome. As in Hunter syndrome, there is no corneal clouding. This gargoyle happens not like very intelligent, as there's developmental delay seen in Hurler syndrome. The stone is also blocking the neck, as there's airway obstruction seen in Hurler syndrome. You see he's got a very big liver and spleen over here to help us remember the hepatosplenomegaly. Hunter syndrome basically involves aggressive behavior. We see home over here with aggressive behavior, and there's no corneal clouding. Other than that, that's basically it. So one more thing we want to mention is how are these diseases inherited? Let's take a look under the TVs. We see there's Reese's chocolate over here, under this TV over here. Reese's shows up in our autosomal recessive videos. Reese's for autosomal recessive. And over here we have a small X. X shows up in our X-linked recessive videos. The small X for X-linked recessive. As Hunter syndrome is inherited in X-linked recessive. Again, Hurler in an autosomal recessive and Hunter in an X-linked recessive. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this scene on Hurler syndrome and Hunter syndrome. Please leave your comments, subscribe to the channel, let us know how we can make it better. Alrighty, take care. You might have asked, why did I choose Homer for this video? I don't know, it was sort of subconscious, but maybe it's because Homer starts with H and ends with R, as both Hurler and Hunter syndrome begin with H and end in R.